fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Did you ever talk to your grandmother or your mother about what it used to be like to bake an angel food cake? Before there was a Betty Crocker angel food cake mix, that is. Well, they used to have to take 13 eggs and separate the whites from the yolks. Can you imagine all that bother? Over a dozen eggs. Angel food cakes took hours then. And I guess that's why they only baked them for very, very special occasions. But now, you can have big, delicious angel food cakes all the time. Mmm, -hmm. it's so easy when Mom uses Betty Crocker Angel Food Cake Mix. That's the mix with the whites of 13 farm-fresh eggs right in the package. Mom just adds water and your favorite flavoring for a perfect cake. Angel perfect every time. Cake after cake after cake. A high light every day is party day kind of cake. And it's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. I hope Mom bakes lots of Betty Crocker angel food cakes at your house. They're so melt-in-your-mouth good. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Blackie Wayne found Joe Collins and Lefty Simpson waiting for him when he arrived at the deserted cabin in the hills. He motioned to the small crates on the floor. Sit yourselves down. Have a little proposition to make. Sure. All right. I'd like to have you boys come in on it with me. Another bank job? Ah, oh, this will be easier than any bank job. The railroads build a shack in town to use as a headquarters for the work gang. They have 300 men working out of town now, building tracks. Yeah, we know that. Everybody knows that. They've been working out of town for a month now. No, not quite a month, Lefty. There are two days more to go. That's where this job we have in mind comes in. The job we have in mind, you said. Who's we? A certain party and I. You don't know the other fella, and I'm not going to tell you who he is. That's the way he wants it. Now, what's the job? The railroad payroll. The payroll for a month. For more than 300 men. There's a thousand dollars a piece in it for you if you help me take it. A thousand a piece? This mysterious hombre. He gets the rest of the money? Yep. That's the way he set it up. That's the way it has to be. Why? Because without him, we wouldn't have a chance to get the money. It'll be the easiest money you ever put your hands on. Well, how do we work it? I'm not telling you till I get your answers. If it's as easy as you say, count me in. What about you, Lefty? I'm in. Tell us about it, Blackie. All right. The payroll comes from Kansas City on the train that arrives tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow night after 11 o'clock, the three men in charge of the work shifts take the money out of the safe again and start to fill the pay envelopes. That's when we walk in? That's when we walk in. Our man will make sure beforehand that no guards are outside. And he'll also make sure that the lock is off the outside door and the door to the room where they'll be working with the money. Now, here's the way we work. The three railroad employees, foremen of various shifts, had been strangers when they came on their new job only a month before. Circumstances had kept them separated most of the time. But now as they kept their late evening appointment to prepare the first payroll, they acted like old friends. Ed Brody, small and timid looking, stood to the side of the safe as burly George Harlan opened it. Harlan turned and gave one bag of currency to Brody. Then he took another bag from the vault and handed it to the slim and ramrod straight Pete Ashburn. Uh, here you are, Pete. Don't let it fall on your foot if you break a toe. You look pale, Brody. What's up? Uh, no, nothing, really. 
Just having this much money around sort of scares me. <laughs> not scared a hold of me, are you? Maybe not. I don't know. Well, if it make you feel any better, I'll put my gun here on the table within reach of you. Sure, that's funny. What's the matter, Hunter? My gun. I thought I put it here in the chair. And I... All right, hey, 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 Wally. Why, who... Three men with bandanas across their faces stood in the doorway with guns leveled. Blackie Wayne, leading the crooks, did the talking. Make a move, any of you, and you die. I mean it. Do as we say, and nothing will happen. I- I'll. We- we'll do as you say. Will we? Well, I won't. Esper, don't be a fool. Oh, huh? Blackie's gun crashed down on the skull of the advancing Pete Ashburn. His Confederates moved fast, each covering the other two railroad men. The next one catches a bullet. Right. Now we're going to take these three bags of money and leave without any trouble. You understand? You are the engineer, mister. We're not standing your way if it's going to mean death. That shows sense. Right. The quivering Ed Brody tied the hands and ankles of George Harlan and the unconscious Pete Ashburn. When he finished, one of the bandits in turn bound him. Gags were placed in the mouths of the three railroad men, and the bandits started out the office door. They were crossing the outer room of the shack when the street door opened, and the guard who had been sent to the railroad siding by one of the three men inside entered. His eyes opened wide as he saw the three bandits, and he reached instinctively for his gun, hey, but he you... hadn't a chance. The fire from three revolvers sent him spinning to the floor, dead. Tonto had been in town that morning and had learned of the holdup. He spent hours tracing rumors and fact, and then rode back to the Lone Ranger's camp, high in the hills outside the town. Tonto, it almost certainly has to be an inside job. Ah. One of those men at the railroad is guilty. Now that he's involved in murder as well as banditry, he's bound to be upset no matter how calm he appears. Uh-huh. A man like that is a menace to the railroad he works for and to the entire town. He has to be caught now before he goes on to other crimes. Kimasabi. Men who do hold up, them get way. They couldn't have gone very far. Not if they have to split with the inside men on the job. They might even be here in the hills. There are many places they could hide. Uh-huh. Tonto, I think the sheriff will need help. Let's ride to town. We go now, Kimasabi? Yes. We'll take our time and go by the back trails. There's just a chance we may learn something that way. Minutes later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp riding towards town on the hill trail. The two bandits, Joe Collins and Lefty Simpson, in their hideout in the hills, became more irritated as the day wore on. Hey, Lefty, I've been thinking. After Blackie paid us a thousand dollars, he went out and hid the rest of the money someplace. Why? Because he probably thought if he kept it here till tonight like we planned, that we'd take it from him. And then he thought right. Hey, maybe he's grabbed the money in Van Moose. Huh? <coughs> Lefty, we're going out and look for Blackie. We're going to do it right now. And when we find them, we're going to take all that money from them. Come on. Joe and Lefty had guessed right. Blackie Wayne had reached a decision to take the hold-up money and set out alone for the Mexican border. When he was sure that Joe and Lefty weren't following him, he doubled back to the spot where he'd hidden the money sacks. He had just unearthed them when he heard a movement in the underbrush behind him. He turned his hand on his gun to face the leering faces of his two partners. Joe's hand was on his holster as he approached. So this is how you watch the main trail, huh, Blackie? We kind of figured something like this. Yeah, you're not so good hiding a trail, Blackie. Look, you don't know what I'm doing. No. Blackie, we think this is your job and your money, yours alone. So we're going to take the money ourselves. Just us two. Yeah, Blackie, just Joe and me. Oh, no, you're not. No! Before Blackie could fire, bullets from the other two guns spat lightning fast. Blackie's face contorted, and his arm fell limp as he slumped to the ground, dead. Joe Collins and Lefty Simpson looked at each other. Yes, Ford, Lefty, we had to do it. Yeah, now we have to take this money and get out of here in a hurry. Let's get it out of that hole and tote it to where our horses are. Right. Get ready? We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sailor Sam is the smartest boy who ever shouted ship ahoy. He can weather any storm that blows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerio. 
Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Good old Cheerios, they got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats, with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now, to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had heard shots somewhere in the brush below them. They galloped through the heavy thicket and headed for the direction of the sound. Within a minute, they came to the clearing where a man lay dead on the ground, sprawled beside a freshly dug hole. Oh, easy, steady, be cool. Easy, Scott, easy. They dismounted, and the Lone Ranger knelt beside the body as Toto ran to the underbrush ahead. The Indian turned. You must have We see two men running away. They must take after them. They killed Blackie Wayne. You say names, you must have You know, dead man? Yes, Toto, easy, steady, be cool. He's Blackie laid an outlaw. Which way'd they go? Then go straight ahead. Come on, sit there. Joe Collins and Lefty Simpson had grabbed the money bags and fled when they heard the horsemen approaching. Now carrying the bags, they staggered to the spot where they'd left their horses. Before they could adjust the bags on the saddles and mount, the pursuing horsemen crashed through the brush behind them. Uh, Flight was impossible, so they turned as Joe Collins shouted, Start shooting, Lefty. We have to fight it out. Yeah. Collins and Lefty fired. Oh, 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 oh. As the Lone Ranger and Toto dropped to the ground and sprawled onto the grass, guns blazing. Shots whizzed close in the tall grass where they lay, but their shots found targets. Toto, we hit them. Uh, and Paul, guns drop. Let's go to them, but so keep your gun ready. Uh. The shooting arms of both bandits had been shattered, and they writhed in pain as the masked man and Indian stood over them. Toto took their guns, then knelt and began to bandage their wounds. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger examined the three canvas bags that had been dropped in the grass. The name of the railroad on the bags and the money inside them made one conclusion inescapable. Toto, this is the money from the holdup. And these men, including Blackie Wayne, must have been the men who did the job. All right, you men, look at me and tell me the truth. You pulled that railroad job last night, didn't you? Didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't shoot. You don't have to. Keep your hands off the trigger. Yeah, we did it. With Blackie Wayne, huh? Yeah, yeah, with Blackie. And you killed him just now. Why? I ask you why. Put us on that gun, will you? We'll tell you. He tried to cross us. Uh, you a friend of Blackie's? You don't know me? Look at me closely. Uh, you don't know me? Uh, no. No, I don't. I don't either. Look at... Hey, you maybe you're the one who planned this job. The one from the railroad. Oh, yeah. Are you? You mean you don't know? Mom, it hurts. Answer my question. No, no, we don't know. Blackie never told us who you were. He said you wanted it that way. Oh, that's right. Even when we held you up, we didn't know which one. Hey, but no. You're too tall. Your shoulders are too wide. You weren't one of the men we held up. No, but you told me what I suspected and what the sheriff will want to know. What? That one of the three railroad men climbed the hole up. The sheriff, you say. Lefty, don't say any more. You've said enough, both of you. Todd and I are going to place you and the loot on your horses and herd you into town. Stand up. Stand up. The Lone Ranger led the two bandits into a grove of trees on the outskirts of town as Toto rode ahead to notify the sheriff. Get him up. Come. <laughs> In town at his office, Sheriff Chuck Allen, alone with two deputies, broke off conversation with them to speak with the Indian who had entered. Toto talked confidentially and in low tones. When the sheriff turned to his aides, there was a look of surprise on his face. Boys, we've called back the posse we have out in the hills. The three hold-up men are done for. 
One of them's dead, and the other two and the loot are being held for us right outside of town. Don't look so dumbfounded, it's true. And wait till I tell you who it was who caught them. Sheriff Allen and his deputies met the Lone Ranger and placed handcuffs on Joe Collins and Lefty Simpson. Then he turned to one of his deputies. Oscar, yeah. ride up into the hills and get the body of Blackie Wayne. Bring it back to town. And if you come across the posse, tell them what's happened. All right. Tonto will lead you to where we found Wayne. Uh, good. Tonto will ride with you, Oscar. Me um, come back here, Kimasani. Tom, you ride beside Simpson and Collins and start for town. We ride behind you. Get him up. Stop uh, uh, Just a moment, Sheriff. Do you mind if I say something to you alone? Why, no. Say anything you like. After what you've done, I'll listen to anything you have to say. The masked man and sheriff rode a short distance away as the deputy Tom guarded the prisoners. Alone, the Lone Ranger outlined a plan he had in mind. We know for sure now that one of the three men, uh, what are their names, the railroad men? George Harlan, Pete Ashburn, Ed Brody. I want you to describe them to me later, if you will. Then, if you'll write notes to Harlan, Brody, and Ashburn, asking them to come to your office after sundown, uh, here's what I'd like to do. Your office will be empty when they arrive, and we let them wait there for a while. <laughs> A short time later, as the sun was fading in the western sky, three men received short cryptic notes from Sheriff Allen. All were puzzled by the notes and a little excited. Ed Brody, timid and visibly shaking, was the last of the railroad employees to enter the sheriff's office. He looked at Pete Ashburn and George Harlan, already seated, and addressed the former as he sat down. How's your... Head feeling, Ashburn. I feel as if I'd been hit by a boulder instead of a gun butt. It's not too bad now, though. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Harlan, do you know why the sheriff wants us here? No. And I'm getting sick and tired of answering his same insinuating questions every few hours. You'd think he'd be here after what he said in the note. What did yours say, Brody? Well, it said... Oh, there's the door. Must be sheriff. Oh. Oh. Okay, what is he, who are you? All right, gentlemen. Sit right where you are. Where's the sheriff? Why are you holding that gun? To use, in case one of you decides to reach for yours. I, I have no gun. Scared, aren't you, Brody? Well, who are you? How do you know me? I know all of you. You may not think so, but I do. One of you I'll know better than the rest. You see, Blackie Wayne. The Lone Ranger paused and let his eyes travel from one man to another seeming to concentrate on each, though only a few seconds passed before he spoke again. Once more, his eyes moved to their faces. Yes, Blackie Wayne. You shouldn't have done business with him, mister. Who who are you talking to? Who's Blackie Wayne? You don't know. He's an outlaw, Brody. I've heard of it. Sure you have. So have I. The Lone Ranger's free hand went into his pocket, and he pulled out the canvas bag which had been crammed there. He threw it on the floor. What's it? It's a payroll bag. Well, where, where did you get that? Where Blackie Lefty and Joe hid it. I, uh, <laughs> I recovered the money, you know. You did? What kind of game is this? Yes, what are you up to? How does it happen you wearing a mask takes over the sheriff's office? I haven't taken over, Harlan. The sheriff will be here. After he takes Lefty and Joe and Blackie Wayne to his office. You mean he's captured the men who held us up last night? They'll be in jail before the night's over. For robbery and murder. Once more, the eyes that gleamed from the mask seemed to settle only on one other pair of eyes. Though the Lone Ranger looked at the three men, Brody squirmed. Well, if if that's the case, what are you doing here? I came to take the guilty man. The one among you who planned the robbery of his own company and who caused the death of a fellow employee. The man who thought he was so smart and had planned everything so perfectly. He's made fools of two of you. I'm going to tell you... Uh, Pardon me. This must be the information I'm waiting for. Stay right there. The three men looked at each other nervously as the Lone Ranger spoke to the unseen person outside the door. When the masked man turned, the gun seemed to hang loose in his right hand as he studied the sheet of paper that had been given him. I was about to say the guilty man would be exposed. 
Now, this paper I received tells me everything I already know. The murderer Stop. is... Pete Ashburn, as he leaped to his feet, grabbed a gun from his pocket. All right, I'm the one. You don't have to say it. Get your hands up, all of you. Ashburn, it was you who planned the hold up. Yes. There. I sent the guard away so my men could come in. And I unlocked the door for them and hid your gun. But, but they hit you, not you out. I asked for it to make it look good. Well, I did it. And somehow, I don't know why, things have gone wrong. But I'm not going to be taken. I'll go out that rear door where my horse is and get away before the sheriff comes. I don't think you will, Ashburn. No. Masked man, I'm going to kill you first. Uh, you can't. There aren't any bullets in your gun. What? How do you know? Ashburn's eyes swept inadvertently to his gun as the Lone Ranger fired. No. You're tricked again, Ashburn. My hand did shatter. It's not going to hurt as much as your neck will when we hang you, Ashburn. Sure. You were outside all the time? Yes, listening to all that went on. I was the one who delivered the note to my friend. You you delivered it. But why didn't you come in yourself and arrest Ashburn? Because we didn't know Ashburn was guilty then. Well, you, you didn't. That's a lie. The masked man said... The masked it. man said the paper told him everything he already knew. You see, he actually knew nothing. The paper was blank. Well, I'll be... A... <laughs> you imagine that, eh? Oscar, yeah. take Ashburn to a doctor, then to jail with the other two. Right. It might interest you to know, Ashburn, that Blackie Wayne was killed this afternoon. Killed? But if he, if he was dead, how could he tell the masked man about me? He didn't. You did all the telling yourself. Oh, what a fool I've been. You were a fool for ever planning the job, especially when my masked friend was in this territory. Sheriff, he, he's gone. Who, who was... I mean, who is he? You haven't guessed? He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendel Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.